This next story is about a banker, the guy that financed Hitler. Now, it's, it's a story that uh, the background basically is I've just finished something for National Geographic, which was shown on Discovery Channel recently about uh, Auschwitz and the role of the Zonderkommando within the Auschwitz. The guy that commissioned me to make that, who was the commissioning editor at National Geographic, suggested another one, which was, I, I just, somebody sent me a book about this guy, Schacht, who, who financed Hitler. It was the main banker who supported, and, and Schacht was an internationally known banker, respected by, uh, what's his name, Montague Norman, who was the governor of the Bank of England, and, and lots of Americans adored this guy. He was a, his history was, he was put in charge at something like 22 of the Belgian banking system when the Germans invaded in 1914. He was the one that was put there to use the funds that were held by the uh, Belgians, that which was left after the rest had been taken to England, but that which was left in those days um, occupied countries, as it still is the case now, had to pay for the armies that were occupying them. And that's what Schacht, Schacht's role was. But, but he was, um, did it such an efficient way and did it so well that every banker subsequently thought this guy's magic. And, and then in 1931, he fell under the charms. And he was, he, re, he was in charge of the Bundesbank. I mean, this is a seriously important German banker. An interesting man in his own right. He was um, the son of a school teacher and a Finnish countess. So a very interesting childhood, an interesting man. He was from northern Germany, so he had a. Um, he was a very democratic person, uh, very interested in the state of Germany, and he was a humanitarian, which may sound a bit of a contradiction when you consider his later roles. But, but the iniquity of the Versailles Treaty was something that was widely condemned by every establishment all over Europe because it was an iniquitous treaty and it was so draconian on the German people that they would still be paying reparations to 2014 or something. That was his background, the iniquity of the Versailles Treaty, and he would lecture throughout the world on the iniquity of this treaty because of the damage it's going to cause. Um, anyway, after the Wall Street crash and the American banks decided they want all their money back from the Germans, which created this terrible inflation in Germany, and of course the rise of the National Socialist Party, which was a direct result of the American banks, incidentally. He met Hitler and was very impressed with Hitler in a one-to-one -one situation uh, as being a patriot, and Schacht was a patriot. And so when this is what Hitler expounded his patriotism. He wasn't an expansionist then, or Schacht didn't think so, but he loved his patriotism and he loved his love for his country and he loved his idea of being, we've got to shock the people into building a new economy. And Schacht said, I'll, I'll help you. And every international banker, once you got Schacht on board, Schacht was the god with all the international bankers. Once Schacht is on board, it's safe to lend money. So then the Americans steamed straight into Germany, started lending the social, National Socialists huge sums of money, rebuilt their arms industry. You know, this is not known widely, but America largely armed the Nazis in the 30s. Then by the time 1937, 38 came and he realized what he'd got himself in bed with, he tried to distance himself and said, look, I, I did, but he could see that people were being murdered around him left, right and center for object, objecting, but he thought I'd probably be better, I'm more important to Hitler is than Hitler is to me, so he'll use his position to be able to persuade Hitler not to be this tyrannical international <coughs> dictator, which is what he was expounding to. So Schacht used his position, and Schacht was given a gold membership of the Nazi party, a badge which allowed him the best restaurants and the best theatre seats. He, you know, so he went, it fell into it. And by the time he really started to object, he was isolated. Hitler didn't, didn't kill him, which is what would normally have happened when he started to criticise him, openly criticise him. But Hitler kept him on board because Hitler knew he needed him, because he was about to launch this huge 
invasion of, of Russia. That was the original intent of, of the Third Reich, was to create this land for the, in the East for the German people. And that was, you know, the fact they invaded France is another story, and that's not as clear-cut as one would think, because he had no intention of, of occupying the rest of Europe. Uh, because uh, no one was anti, anti him. All the establishment figures all over Europe and Britain all thought National Soci Socialism was the way forward. And it, and it certainly transformed the German economy and everyone was applauded him. He was, uh, he was a hero. And you, know, you think of our Lord Halifax was, was vehemently opposed to uh, uh, Churchill's stand against um, Hitler. He, he was a great supporter. He wanted, you know, they all wanted to do a, make a pact with them because fascism didn't threaten the status quo. Communism was the threat to status quo. So the Second World War was a fight against fascism. It was a fight against communism disguised as a fight against fascism because it, it threatened the status quo. He was eventually carted off to a concentration camp and he thought that would be the end of it. And he survived for some reason because the Russians had taken one of the concentration camps, so they moved into another one, Dachau, I think it was, and he thought, this is it, I'm going to go now. And for some reason, all, although all around him were being executed, he managed to survive. And of course, he was tried at the Nuremberg, and he was one of the two people, I think, or three people that was acquitted, largely on the recommendations of the governor of the Bank of England, Montague Norman, who um, uh, spoke up for him and the American ambassador spoke up on his behalf initially but then he was shouted down so it was only the British that managed to get him released and and I think it was because of the friendship the friendship between Montague Norman and he that created that although there were probably more sinister motives involved because he couldn't be released straight away because there were lynch mobs out for him because he was a, a prominent Nazi, although he had nothing to do with the Holocaust or anything like that, but he was a prominent Nazi. So he had to keep his head down for a while and then he started another bank, you know, and then he went and advised the Brazilian government on how to run their affairs. I mean, he was a very successful man all the way through, even after the Second World War, and he died at the ripe old age of 93 while putting his dinner trousers on to go out for dinner. He fell over and cracked his head on a table. 93, no, 103 he was, that was it, 103. So he had a good life but a fascinating story, and he was the man that made Hitler possible. Without Schacht, no Hitler. Because he couldn't have done it without the money. He couldn't have reoccupied the Rhineland in '33 because he didn't have the money to do it. He, he, it was Schacht that allowed him the platform to do all that. So it's, it's a story that should be told. It's never been told, it should be told, and, and we'd like to make a programme about that. So that's... Um, I've called it uh, Hitler's Banker, so uh, if you want to invest in that one, that's a very interesting programme.